We began our study of transmission line theory by considering a lossless transmission line as a two-port device. And we uh, uh, were able to go through and derive the telegrapher equations and from that uh, derive the general solution for the total voltage and the total current along the transmission line. From that, likewise, the plus wave voltage and the minus wave voltage and current, the reflection coefficient, and also the line impedance functions. But all of these were written in terms of some unknown uh, complex wave amplitudes, V0 plus and V0 minus. And to determine those values, we needed to apply boundary conditions. We needed to connect something to that transmission line. So then we went and we connected a passive load to one end of our transmission line. And that turned that in two-port device into a one-port device, a terminated transmission line. And we could look at that, to, uh, that transmission line as an impedance transformer that would transform the load impedance at one end to the input impedance at the other. And we went through and we studied that and looked at several special cases. Ultimately, though, we determined boundary conditions uh, at the end of the line and were able to come up with the relationship between V0 plus and V0 minus, one that depended on the load reflection coefficient uh, of the end of the line. <clears throat> From that, we showed that the reflection coefficient function and the line impedance function became uh, completely unambiguous. They were completely um, uh, determined uh, with this relationship between V0 plus and V0 minus. There were no unknown values, uh, unknown wave um, uh, complex wave amplitudes in the solution. But for total voltage and total current and plus wave voltage and minus wave voltage, we found there still was one, um, we could write them uh, the solutions in terms of one unknown wave uh, amplitude. We didn't know what that value was, and of course we needed to evaluate the boundary condition on the other in the line to determine it. Then we went and we disconnected the load and we connected the source then to the beginning of the line. And we studied this problem now of a source connected to our transmission line. We thought of the transmission line as a source transformer because once we connected the source to a transmission line, we have transformed that source into a new value. We went through and we looked at boundary conditions at the beginning of the line where the source were connected. And from that, we came up with a relationship. Once again, just like we did for the load, we found, up, found a relationship between V0 plus and V0 minus, the two unknown wave amplitudes. This relationship was far more complicated than the one we had for the load. Instead of being related by a simple constant like gamma L, we found that V0 plus and V0 minus had a relationship uh, that was not proportional. There was another term in there that was uh, uh, proportional to neither and of course that term depend, uh, was dependent on the uh, source voltage <clears throat> uh, of the line. Nonetheless we did have a relationship between V0 plus and V0 minus. Again one that was derived for the structure of a source connected to a transmission line, a transmission line that was not connected to a load. Now, finally, we're going to put the pieces together. We're going to take a length of transmission line, a two-port device, we're going to put a passive load at one end, and we're going to put a source uh, at the other. And we want to analyze this whole structure. Notice the index. We have index increasing as we move from the source to the load, as is the normal um, uh, viewpoint. Uh, from the standpoint of definition on, on the numerical index Z of where do we find the length of the, or where do we find the position rather of the load we call that zl purple zl again this just denotes some number that we've um, uh, selected for that point some mile marker likewise on the other end we have um, we have a value zg which is the um, uh, zg which is the um, marker of the um, marker for the uh, beginning of the line where the source is located. And of course, we know since ZL and ZG must be in units of uh, distance, that the difference between the two is the physical length of our transmission line.
you hopefully recall that um, analysis we did where we applied a, um, a load at the end of our transmission line. We terminate our transmission line with the passive load and we went down there and we applied boundary conditions and we came up uh, essentially with this result that the relationship between the um, um, uh, minus going uh, wave, the voltage of the minus wave at the location of the load is related to the voltage value of the plus wave at the location of the load, a relationship that's um, expressed simply as a constant, a value of gamma L, and gamma L being the load reflection coefficient as we know it. From that, we could express more specifically the relationship between the uh, complex wave amplitude V0 minus and the complex wave amplitude V0 plus, where once again, we simply uh, have a constant that we uh, multiply, uh, gamma L that's modified in this case by a phase term uh, with the electrical length of two beta um, Z L. After the battery condition analysis at the end of our transmission line where our passive load is connected, we went through and we looked at uh, functions, transmission line functions like total voltage. And what we found is they still had, uh, a, uh, for the most part, a complex constant that was unknown, a complex wave amplitude. We could write it in terms of V0 minus uh, that was there. So we had no complete unambiguous specification for the total current or the total uh, voltage, uh, likewise for the plus wave voltage or the minus wave voltage. We did, however, find that we could express the uh, uh, load, um, I'm sorry, the line impedance function uh, unambiguously uh, after we uh, terminate our transmission line with the load. At that point, there was no uh, unknown wave uh, complex wave amplitudes V0 plus or V0 minus. Same thing with the reflection coefficient. Once we terminate our transmission line, the reflection coefficient function is known unambiguously at every point on the line. However, we still again don't know the uh, total current and total voltage or the plus and minus wave voltage. So how do we determine the um, uh, unknown value, this uh, amplitude, uh, complex wave amplitude V0 plus. Well, clearly we need to go through and apply a second boundary condition um, at the beginning of the line. And what we did was, uh, again, unattach the load and simply analyze the interaction between a source and the transmission line by itself with the load uh, at the other end completely undefined. When we did that, um, by applying boundary conditions, we came up with a relationship between V0 plus and V0 minus. We could write it in this term or in this term with the proper definition of um, um, source uh, impedance uh, reflection coefficient uh, gamma G, a little more compact written that way. But what we have, again, is a relationship between V0 plus and V0 minus. Not nearly as simple a relationship as we had in the case of a passive load at the other end. This boundary condition uh, has a, another term in here that's neither proportional to uh, V0 plus or dependent on V0 plus or V0 minus in there. Yet we still have an equation that relates V0 plus and V0 minus. Now, think about what we've done. We took the boundary condition at the end of the line where the load is, we, and we came up with the relationship between V01 and V0 minus, the, the ratio of the two essentially being uh, a value dependent on gamma L. Then we looked at the boundary condition at the beginning of the line where the source is, and we came up with an expression, a different expression, but one that again uh, related V0 plus and V0 minus. We take those two equations, one for the boundary condition with the load in the transmission line only, the other with the boundary condition of the source in the transmission line only. We take those two equations, each having two unknowns, V0 plus and V0 minus, and of course, algebraically then, we can solve them to determine the value unambiguous of each. And so let's do that now. What we're going to do is take this expression, which is again the expression from the uh, boundary condition of the source and the transmission line. Notice it depends on V0 minus, of course, and we're going to extract or take the uh, solution we had for the other boundary condition at the end of the line where we had the passive load, that simple relationship given here. And we're going to insert this 
into this location uh, in the first relationship. And so we do that, we've combined our two boundary condition solutions, and what we have is an expression with one equation and one unknown. V0 plus is equal to this result, and of course this result depends likewise on V0 plus. Now we could simply solve this equation for the value and reveal the value of V0 plus. And here is that value of V0 plus. You might be a little bit disappointed. It's not a simple uh, result. Uh, it's uh, um, not easily calculated. Uh, but to a certain extent, it can't be that simple of a result because remember, this value needs, or needs to depend on every element in the circuit. The value of the plus wave amplitude depends on every element uh, uh, of the circuit uh, that's given here. It includes VG, that's given right there. ZG shows up in gamma G, in the definition of gamma G. The characteristic impedance Z0 is likewise part of both the reflection coefficient gamma G and the reflection coefficient gamma L. And of course, the load impedance shows up in the value of gamma L. Additionally, the line length, the physical length of the line, L, shows up in there. And of course, it's always as it is modified by the value beta to determine, to express it in terms of the electrical length of the transmission line. Notice we also have this uh, purple index, ZG, written here. This is the index on the, uh, uh, on the position index Z, the value that we give to the location uh, of the source at the beginning of the line. And it seems weird, perhaps, that the answer that we get would depend on this index notation. But remember, V0 plus is simply defined as the plus wave voltage at the location of the line we denote Z is equal to zero. Since where we denote Z is equal to zero is up to us, it clearly, or this result, should depend on how we define our index, and it does. So we then take our value of V0 plus, our uh, complex wave amplitude V0 plus, which now we uh, know specifically in terms of the uh, values of each of the elements in our circuit, our source, our transmission line, and our load. And we take that value of V0 plus and we insert it back into our solution for the total voltage. So now we can say unambiguously, specifically, what is the voltage at every location on our transmission line? And when we do that, we get this result here. And again, you might be a little bit disappointed in that this result is not particularly compact. It's not particularly simple or, or, or uh, elegant um, uh, in, in, in any way. Uh, but yet, when you think about it, it really can't be because it has to be a solution that comprehends all the elements of the circuit. It has to comprehend, has to be dependent on the source elements, VG and ZG. It has to depend on the transmission line uh, parameters, Z0 and uh, beta and uh, L. It needs to be it needs to be dependent on the load impedance at the end of the line. And so when we start factoring all these values in there, it makes the result a little bit clunky. Now, what do we do with this result? Do we ever use it really to solve things? Not really. If you ever use this equation uh, to solve a problem, you're probably uh, doing it uh, the wrong way, or at least a way that's uh, much more difficult than what it uh, needs to be. This is uh, not the right equation, the solution, uh, you know, write it down kind of thing for solving problems. When you think about it, this sort of is reminiscent of the solutions we had when we put a two-port device between a source and a load where we knew the trans impedance parameters of that two-port device and we knew all four complex values. When we solve for the voltage V1 and I1 at the beginning uh, and we solve for voltage V2 and, and, uh, and I2 uh, on the other side of the two-port device, we found that those results were uh, very um, very long and complex um, um, in their result. And I said at the time that we would never really use these results to solve problems. Instead, what we do is sort of break the problem down into equivalent circuits. If I want to know the voltage at port one and the current at port one, I'm going to determine equivalent circuit looking one way or the other, and then simply solve the uh, 
um, equivalent source and the equivalent load problem. Likewise, for port two, we're going to come up with equivalent circuits to solve these problems. And that's really what we're going to do on a transmission line. If we ever want to solve transmission line problems, instead of resorting to some recipe um, that we pull out and uh, our cheat sheet and use, we're really going to go through and apply the boundary conditions and use our engineering knowledge and get to the solution in a more uh, easier and direct route. So we can take the total voltage, and we saw there are two terms in that total voltage solution. We can parse that into uh, one term, which we recognize as the plus wave voltage, given that we have e to, the minus, e to the minus j beta z here. We know that describes the wave propagating, uh, the voltage of the wave propagating in the direction of increasing z. Likewise, for the second term, we get a uh, e to the plus j beta z, and so that describes uh, the voltage of the wave propagating in the direction of decreasing z. Notice, other than the signs of these complex exponentials, the only difference between the plus wave uh, voltage and the minus wave voltage is this reflection coefficient gamma L. All this term out front is the same as this term here. We've simply taken it and multiplied it by gamma L to be the uh, coefficient in terms of the phase function um, associated with the minus wave voltage. And here it passes the Sandy check. <clears throat> if we have a gamma L which is equal to zero, in other words the load is a quote match load, it's numerically equal to Z zero, gamma L will be zero, and of course then we know we have no uh, minus wave, no reflected wave from that match load, and this math confirms that. If gamma L is equal to zero, clearly the minus wave voltage is going to be zero as well. I now want to take these results and evaluate them uh, at either end of our transmission line. First, we're going to go through and evaluate these results at the end of the line where the load is. And again, we go through and when we define our index, we pick some arbitrary value to define the uh, index describing the in the line where the load is. And I've defined this value, this index is this ZL, this purple ZL. Um, um, and again, this could be any number, it's up to you to decide. And we talked about this before. It causes some stress in students because if uh, you define the end of the transmission line where the load is to be a value Z is equal to one, your purple ZL is equal to one, in other words, um, uh, and uh, your friend goes through and defines the uh, position of the load of the transmission line as a value Z is equal to minus two, there ZL purple is, uh, is equal to minus two, uh, the math that you get for total voltage and total current and everything else is going to look different. Uh, it will have different values. And you think, well, gosh, how could we, uh, how could we be, both be right if we have math that looks different? Well, if you go through each of you and evaluate the total voltage, uh, uh, for example, or plus wave voltage, minus wave voltage, at the end of your transmission line where you declare the source, or, or, I'm sorry, the load to be, uh, what you'll find, and again, I went through and I took this and put this into the expression we had for a plus wave voltage, and we get this result here. And notice this result is independent of that index, is independent of how whatever uh, you called uh, your uh, end of the line index uh, uh, to be, whether you called it a plus one or minus two or plus 65.8, it doesn't matter, you are going to get this result. So in other words, both you and your friend are going to come up with the same result for the voltage at the in the line where the load is um, where the load is located and of course this has to be true the transmission line and the load and the source cares not how we define our index it doesn't matter to it uh, what we call the end of the line or the beginning of the line. Uh, if the voltage there at the end of the line is uh, uh, J2, then uh, that's what the voltage is. And uh, our result had better say that that is the answer, uh, regardless of how we define our index. And this shows that that indeed will be the case, that you don't need to worry about your index. You will get the right answer. <clears throat> Um, uh, for the problem at hand. So this is what we get for V plus at the end line where our load is. Again, it's independent of how we define the index. Likewise for V minus at the end of the line where the load is and for the total voltage, of course, then the same thing. These results are all dependent on this index in terms of how you define it. So again, don't fret about how you define uh, your indexes. 
To reinforce this, let's go evaluate the same things at the beginning of our transmission line, where our source is located. In our index, we would define, we could define uh, some value of uh, ZG. Uh, uh, again, an index that uh, simply denotes the location at the beginning of the line where the source is. Now, recall the relationship between uh, the index for the end of the line where the load is and the um, uh, beginning of the line where the source is. The difference of the two must be equal to the physical length of the transmission line. So uh, we can only define one or the other of them arbitrarily, and then the other is fixed by the physical length of that transmission line. But if we take our plus wave voltage and our minus wave voltage and our total voltage and we evaluate it at the index Z is equal to ZG, what we find again is we get three answers for the voltage at the beginning of our line, which are independent of that uh, index definition. Uh, so again, we don't need to worry about what the value of ZG is, just as long as it's consistent with ZL and that the difference is equal to the physical length, um, we will uh, get the same physical answer for the question, what, uh, what is the voltage at the beginning of the transmission line where the source is located? I want to look at one of the um, uh, results of that last page. Uh, where we evaluated the voltages at the beginning of the transmission line where the source is located. And I want to look particularly at the value of V plus, the plus wave voltage. Again, the plus wave is propagating away from the source toward the load. If we evaluate that plus wave voltage at the beginning of the line for one specific case, and that's the case where the uh, ref uh, uh, load, I'm sorry, the source reflection coefficient, gamma G, is equal to zero. Recall that happens when the source impedance ZG is numerically equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. When ZG is equal to Z0, gamma G will be equal to zero. And when we have a source that's numerically equal to Z0, we call that the match source, quote unquote, the mass match source there. <clears throat> And we go through and evaluate uh, our plus wave voltage for a match source when gamma G is equal to zero. And this big mess that we have here simplifies down now to <coughs> a very simple result. VG divided by two. The open circuit source voltage of our source divided by two is the plus wave voltage at the beginning of our transmission line. Now, this is a very important result. The other results in this page, frankly, are not going to be very useful to us. We simply filled them out for completion to show um, um, that, that we could put both boundary conditions together and get an unambiguous expression for total voltage and, and total current and so forth. But we probably aren't ever going to use those directly. This result, however, is very important to us, and we're going to use it over and over again uh, later in the course. And so I should have put this in a big blue box or something like that, um, put uh, something here to indicate its importance, uh, because this is very important. So make sure you remember this equation. If you remember and write down only one equation in this particular section, write this equation down. When we have a match source, when the source impedance is numerically equal to Z0, the plus wave voltage at the beginning of the transmission line, right there at Z is equal to ZG, all right, not anywhere else, just the beginning, right here at the source, that is going to be numerically equal to VG over 2. Finally, to complete this uh, analysis, this presentation, uh, we're going to show, since now we have the value of Z, V0 plus, we can insert that into the uh, equation or the expression for the total current along the transmission line, a function of position Z. And we do that, we get this result here. Again, not a particularly um, uh, simple um, um, result, but one that does comprehend all the elements in our uh, circuit, the source, the transmission line, and the load.